Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. And what you're about to watch right now is me edit all of the Keeper images from the latest edition of the Frono's Photo Show. This time it's episode two from Cologne, Germany. Now, if you haven't seen the full episode yet, check the link down in the description or look for the I button up above and go ahead and click to watch that episode. But I'm going to turn around right now and use Adobe Lightroom to edit all of the images and you'll get to see me go through it step by step. All right, I'm gonna change clothes and edit. All right, so let's get editing the photos. I have gone ahead and selected down to 78, I believe. Yeah, 78 from 299, so that's not a lot of photos, but we didn't take a lot of time to do this shoot. Uh, this shoot is for, as you've already heard, a Fronos Photo Show episode. So I'm gonna go through and edit the images. This I'm considering the bonus type materials. Now, I didn't have a lot of gear with me. I only had a 5D Mark IV, 24 to 105. I had the 11 to 24 F4, I bought that, I brought that with me, and then a 51 II. So we were traveling pretty light with what we had, so I had to use what we had to get the images, but that's not a big deal. This is the Kölner Dome, the cathedral, not ideally an amazing shot, but I knew this going into it that across the river during the day wasn't going to really make for an awesome shot. No ND filters, didn't put anything on the camera, sorry, on the lenses. So this is what you're dealing with. It may be better just to go gothic and go straight up black and white, being that it's void of color. And I'm not going to talk terribly too much throughout this thing, but... I knew I wasn't going to like this shot anyway when I took it, but we needed it. We needed it. I mean, yeah. I'm just being honest. I don't like this shot. At night, though, is when this place comes to light. Well, the, the Kölner Dome's lit up. This bridge is lit up. This is a busy-ass bridge that leads right into the train station in Cologne. All right, can I stop taking pictures of this thing out here? And you can see the haze, also using a 24 to 105, uh, what happens at a super distance. I'm not focused on the bridge. I'm focused on the dom right up here. They call it the dom, the Kölner dom. But all we need for the show is a handful of super solid images. That's what's needed for the show. Not, not making excuses, though, for shitty photos. They get better, trust me. They do get better. Oh, Jared, come on. Anyway, you got all these love locks on the bridge. I'm still focused on the Dom over here. But what's actually, damn it, Lightroom does this. I still don't know why they haven't moved it up. But there's the dehaze down here. Oh, yes, yeah, so clear, so nice. You see, this is the dehaze slider. I don't know why it's hidden, and I don't know why I can't move it, but it may come into handy. Come into handy? May come in handy on certain shots. Or not. But it's an option that you have there. Let's see, I play with the shadows on this one to bring that up. Then I'll tighten this up. Boom. See that? That's what your clarity does, but don't go too far because then it looks terrible. It actually doesn't look... Yeah, you get the glowy McGlowerson stuff around certain things. So I, I usually don't go too high, but it just needs a little bit to tighten it up. Let's see if we can warm it up a little bit. Warm it up just a little bit. Boom. All right. All right, we got that. <sighs> Keep in mind, this video tends to be a little long because it's just watching me do the edits and giving some feedback on ripping on my own photos or just talking about some tips and some tricks. My editing style is unique. Well, I think it's a little unique. I sometimes crush the blacks and highlights and all that stuff. I don't like the flat images. Personal preference, that's what editing is. Let's go black and white. I am just kidding. There's too much color in this image to not go and leave it in the color. 
Whoa, snap. Mm. Coming up a little yellow. Yellow. I say yellow. I don't know why people still say yellow. My grandmother used to say yellow. It's yellow. No, it's yellow. What did I shoot this one with? 24 to 105 F4. Yeah, not the sharpest lens in the world. We use that when it comes to shooting video for run and gun. But for everything else, it's not super duper duper sharp. Oh, it's Barbara and Thomas. Oh, yeah, you know Barbara and Thomas. They came over last holiday season for dinner. Okay, Barbara and Thomas. As you can see, I'm focused right here on this. The goal is, this is an okay photo, but it doesn't really... The point of the photo shoot... I can't get comfortable sitting at my desk. The point of the photo shoot is to really focus on the dom and what goes on around the dom. So this is in the background. What's that, F4 still? Tighten it up. These do definitely seem to be a little on the yellow side. Mmm. I think the color is too good. Not saying good, but it's there. I'm going to even pump up the sa the vibrance and saturation cuz it's not going to hurt because these people are totally in shadow anyway. Wow. Not a lot of corrections done to this. Ooh, that's terrible. Let's see. That's when you go and you you know you've gone too far. So you can do it just a little bit, but don't go too far. I picked this because they were holding hands. Obviously, the sun is not in favor, but there's my shadows. But I hate the way this looks, so I tighten it up again. And why do I hate the way it looks? Because it looks fake. It looks fake. Um, I could go in there and I could, you know, paint in over them and do all that good stuff, but... I, I Call me a lazy editor. I just don't feel like doing it. And spending hours on a photo that's okay. Just trying to decide, do I like that or that? I'm not doing this. I'm just showing you what happens when you do do that. Look, it's not the worst in the world. It's not the best in the world. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with this. <sighs> it's just a lock, everybody. Otto. I don't know. I thought this would be cool. Just because of the graffiti. Who knows? It has nothing to do with the Dom again, but... Maybe it could be used somewhere. You kind of never know. I'm going to town on the saturation just because. Same exposure? Not even close to the same exposure, so I can't sync them both. See, this isn't so good because you're distracted by the background. Terrible. This is a terrible photo. Get out of here. I 
This was just me going around looking for images on the bridge. I knew that the good stuff was going to come later on at the Kohner Dome because that's where the people were and that's where a lot of the stuff should happen. But going across the bridge, I knew there could be some stuff here to get. I was trying to line up my lines with the uh, the bridge and everything. I love black and white. I really do. This was this guy taking a picture. Uh, he's attempting to take a picture. That's how you don't take a picture, by the way. Rule number one. Don't take a picture like this guy. Super yellow. It was very sunny. And it wasn't Philadelphia. It was Cologne. Uh-huh. Named after a Cologne. The Cologne, can anybody guess the name of what the Cologne was called in Cologne when they decided to call the city Cologne? Yeah, it was called Cologne. I know, it's funny, right? See, now there's no people in it. I can get away with some, I mean, there's people in it, but see how I lined up the lines here? That was what I was trying to do with uh, the, the composition. Ooh, and it's an 11 to 24. See, I'm not a person that hate that, that gets upset if there's white spot, white areas uh, in my shots. Just kidding. It's color. Just trying to convey. The amount of locks, love locks, not locks of love. Locks of love would be the hair pro, the hair thing. Now we get into the real thing. So I was looking for most of the stuff that had to do with the Dom, and I guess these are old school remnants of maybe Roman civilization stuff that they have up here. And then there was this guy who was just singing. He was just like... Actually, you can probably hear it in the video. Now I got to find the image here. And when I say find the image, I mean I got to bring it to life. Now, obviously, I'm not going to stick with this. You just have to understand I am making my tweaks to find the image. Do I want it in black and white? Do I want it in color? What is going to work the best for this image? That's solid. I just, I just, do we need the color in this image is the question. Does it become distracting that you see this color and then you have this? Yes, it's a wide shot, but you'll see that right down here, I get tighter, tighter, tighter until I have a head shot. And did ask this guy for permission. And you know that I'm a big fan of black and white anyway. I'm going to pull back a little bit on that. It's a little distracting over here, but rule of thirds in, in full effect. I may go with color on the next one. We'll see. Yeah. But then you start to get it to come to life. Man, black and white for street photos. 
I mean, yeah, the color's fine, but black and white, man. I don't know that this one will end up being black and white, but... Concentrating on finding the image. I want to check something. Damn, 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 damn. But also, keep this in mind as I back away from the microphone that I say this all the time, that if there's no context to where you're at, this shot could be shot on any street corner in the world. I love having context in it, but you'll see some context as we go forward. In the photo story side of it, you will see context when you watch the episode. You will see the context of the images because it will all make sense. But as they stand alone... You wouldn't know that this is Germany unless I told you that it was Germany. I'm not done with this. I just wanted to sink it. I don't know. I think the... Shit. I'm going to have to do both. Uh, This. Go black and white. Highlights just a little bit. Black. Oh, it's so hard to tell. Anyway, let's call it a day right there. That That's solid, but it may look good in black and white also. So I was able to sync that because they were taken basically at the same time. Something about black and white, though, that just makes it seem less like a snapshot, more like, less like an amateur shot. And what I'm trying to say, it just feels like a lot of times that you see color photos, I mean, yes, you see a lot of color photos, but it seems like a lot of photos just look like somebody stopped and turned and got a snapshot. I mean, look how solid the black and white, in my opinion, looks. It's tight. Try and see the pinstripes. They're still there. So this is just giving myself multiple options for the future. Uh, I see what we've got here. I mean, I love how tight this shot is looking. One five hundredth, one five hundredth. So these are all about the same in terms of exposure. So I'll go ahead and sync them up. This way it gives me a starting point. Oh, nice. Just had to warm it up just a little teeny, teeny, teensy, weensy, weensy bit. Taking a look at the guitar real quick. what's crazy about street performers you never know is it just a uh, superstar in disguise who just wants to try something different i don't want to do this because you see how bad it looks just everything got really bad when that happened i gotta do it again And I will decide after which ones, well, you'll probably see in the episode which ones ended up getting used. Because sometimes you have to do edits. And then you have to live with them for a minute and decide which one is for you. I'm 
gonna resync based off of the new one. Yeah, what I mean by live with it, I mean that you need to look at the images at a different time. Like this one, the color may be better. Or it just may not be that good of a shot to begin with. Because here we've got the eye contact. And there's always little tweaks that I can and do make when I go back after living with an image for a minute. I just don't think that's as strong as when you have the eye contact more, more so along the lines like this. And again, that's good, but the color in this case, with the flare off the guitar may be better. The other ones wasn't so much, so I'm actually going to remove this one. And then we get to this shot. Asked permission. Too yellow. Don't want to take too much out. So I don't have the guitar in here for context or anything. Well, the mustache is nice and sharp. The eyes are pretty darn that sharp. I'm going to do both, but obviously the black and white looks pretty good. I think my mustache is starting to look like him. I better shave soon. I'm going to bring back the highlights a little bit on him. Nope. Mm -mm. I'm just correcting myself. Pulling back just a little bit. And no, I won't go into the eyes and and brighten them up. I, I don't like the ghostly fake look. All right, we got that. Then just boring shots to me or stuff like this. Lines like this, you can see I have the line straight here. But as you point up and try to get this stuff, it's going to be much more difficult uh, to keep your line straight unless you have a tilt shift lens. But in the grand scheme of things, when you're traveling and out and about, you just, you get shots to share with people. Whoa, look at the, look at the glass. I read something about the glass was replaced um, a bunch of years ago. Because the original glass, I think, got blown out in the war. World War II, that is. Not a good shot, sorry. I mean, why am I sorry? I took it. It's just not a good shot. That one's no good either because of the angle. So here was the dilemma. We've got the the Kölner Dome. Ba look at the size of it, by the way. Bathed in, in light. Then we've got this guy painting, drawing, chalking down here. It's not going to be easy to uh, watch, you know, uh, to bring this back to life. But you can kind of get the picture here. It started and, and where we're going. Um, those HDR things could work in this case. I don't know. Does black and white make it come to life? Oh, man. Hard to say, right? This is not really, well, there is color in it because you have all the chalk and them set up around here. Oops. We could 
theoretically, we could follow the uh, line of color. We could do this. Oi. No, I was right the first time. Right about there. That's why it looked weird. The clarity was all the way down. Interesting, right? That's where it started. That's where we're at with the edit. <laughs> it doesn't suck what you're able to do with the raw files. I'm going to go ahead and do both here. Um, I'm actually going to warm this up now. There we go. A little more inviting. Maybe it's a little too inviting. I like it. I'm going to go ahead and create a virtual copy. Go ahead and do the black and white. Boom. I like the natural vignette that's going on. Uh, there is lens correction for this lens. I usually don't use it. Oh, Jesus. I hate that it gets rid of all that natural vignette. I love that. I don't want the vignette. I like the vignette. Um, I don't want to get rid of that. So, being that I did the work on this one, I'm not going to do the work on this one. Then we just have the guy chalking. You can see how you lose the background. But when I bring him up, that's when you start to see. I'm going to bring the background down. You see the highlights? I'm just going to bring it down so it's not as distracting. There we go. I could also... bring down the background you could dodge and burn the background but in this case I'm just gonna go with it I don't know I don't know if I want the color or the black and or white I think you gotta like the color here maybe a higher angle could have done away with this background if I shot down a little bit but I, I liked being on his line but it Let's see if I gave myself that option. And the answer is nine. I did not give myself the option. Nonetheless, nonetheless, we'll go with this. So I asked him to take his portrait. And then he was in the shadow. So as you can see, oy. as you can see, it's not super strong. So I was like, we need to rotate. I'll, I'm just going to bring this to life. See, because you can't really tell the Dom is there. I had him rotate this way. It's not that you can see the Dom either. This one is sharp. Um, I will tell you that I, didn't do a good job framing. I did get it right. Watch. You'll see. There I ended up doing it. But I think if I missed, I mean, look, his eyelids are, everything sunk back in. So, and I don't know why I was at 2.5. I could have been at 3.2. I shouldn't have been at 2.5. I was not, I don't know. It was a last second thing. But you can see here how the difference in the eye sharpness um, that's why I'm going with it. So that's the explanation on that. Now we got to go through the process of making this image come to life. We 
It's the eyes you lose. Yes, I'm concentrating here. Yeah, I mean, you lose the eyes. We could do this. Bring them up a little bit. Just like that. And just like that, I'm kidding. Ugh. This is why I don't do this stuff, because I'm not very good at it. See how that starts to look fake? I don't like doing that. And not just because I suck at it. Just because I don't like doing that. We'll go ahead and do a black and white one after. See, that's bringing it back a little bit. Bring the sh highlights back in, uh, down. He is a little grizzled. That's sharp as sharp can be. So there, we got that. And we'll go to town on a black and white. Yeah, I mean, I wish there was some light bouncing back. It's just his eyelids completely block the light. Completely block the light. So then the chalk to tell the story. We can do this. We can play that up a little bit. Tighten it up also right here. Black and white, guys. Uh, Nine. No. Crazy chalk, though, right? How much chalk they must have to lay down. I like getting the detailed shots. It tells a great story. Oh, are these cigarettes right next to it? Or is that white chalk? It says white peeps. I think that might be chalk. It's cool. You got these sandals with all the stuff on it. Here we go again. I guess I was exposing for him this time. I think I got it with the other one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that one's better anyway. Less distortion. There's my higher angle, by the way, to get rid of the background. That's good.
They're basically the same. <sighs> Stupid 24 to 105. Boy, do I wish I had a 24 to 70. This is gonna be, it would be so much sharper. But then again, a good shot is a good shot is a good shot. It's still way too bright. Hmm. Kind of with all the color in the pants and Oh, and you got some movement in the hands and you have a cigarette in the other. Too much vibrance. Two hundredth of a second. So now I did it with the people walking by. All right, let's sync these because they are very similar. And then I can go through and tweak a little bit. That one's black and white. I hate the Coke bottle, but that's what he had. I do like the grizzled nature. It's really hard to tell yourself to do these in black and white. And this is where the 105 came in handy. Still not as sharp. I would have grabbed the 70 to 200. Do you have the cigarette? He's got so much chalk on himself. Holy Jesus. I'm I'm at a loss with this. It's just I didn't isolate the I mean the background's isolated. It's just not interesting. Let's see. I don't want to go too far because then it just takes it too far. I just, just lose, just hard decisions here. Because the color looks good, but then the black and white draws you into him more because you're not distracted by, say, a pink dress in the background. But my color edit isn't super good here. What do you guys think? You can leave comments. I mean, yeah, there's color, but... Money going in. Shit. Uh, 
Watchmen, like always, I'll put up some of these raw files. I still think the black and white is tight. I want it to be a little darker. And then this is just bringing in the Kölner Dome. No tripod or anything. Um, this is just to have those wider shots. Not any amazing shot, but it's, like I say in the videos, it's stuff that you can share with the world, with your phone. You know, send this to the phone, get a nice shot. Everybody would be like, that's so amazing. You're such a great photographer. That seems to be what happens. Still more to go telling this photo story. I mean, I could do that, but I don't want to, because that's not the focus. It's not the people in the foreground. Oh, hello. Hello. It's me. I'm in one. Mm -hmm. That's a snoozer. God, that makes my shot just look so, I mean, whatever. I'll leave it. I don't like it. I'm just telling you right now, I don't like it. What an amazing building, though. I can tell you that much. What did it take, 14 bombs during the war, I think? Something like that. Then, of course, some details started to show up. Man, that 24 to 105 is not good around the edges. I'm not going to go black and white because I like the stone feel. I have, oh, actually, I, I'll get to that next one in just a second. Unbelievable stonework, right? Casey at the bat. So then there was this woman. I caught. She caught my eye over here. And that one's not sharp. But we'll get to the rest of that in a second. And I'll explain the dilemma, the decisions. Saul are sitting here, standing there, looking... Now, there's a lot of beggars around there, and you never know. It's the same thing in most cities. Uh, there's always people asking for money. Now, uh, you have to make the decision, are you going to shoot it? And I say this in the video. I don't know if it gets used, but I made the decision to try and get the image. I gave her a couple of euros, and that doesn't make anything right or wrong. Certain people may perceive it as being the wrong thing to take the picture, uh, certain situations there are, if it's life or death and somebody, you know, you can help, then you probably don't take the picture. But 
street photography and photojournalism, you have to capture certain things, at least in my mind. You have the, the ability to do it, to tell the story. That's, your, that's what you're trying to accomplish. Um, I don't see it as doing something at the expense of somebody else. Uh, it's a shitty situation when there's things like this going on. I chose to do the photos and then move on. I know that somebody coming out of the Kölner Dome yelled at the Stephen and Todd for filming it. Um, but who is she to say what is right and what is wrong? We each have to make that decision. And in this case, I went with making the images. And that's what I did. It was difficult. It's difficult because it, it's like, yeah, it's difficult. You don't know the story. You don't know what's going on. You don't, you really don't. So that's, that's the story. I selected this because you had somebody in like a white robe just walking by and I looking at it and like what's going on in the image. She was in an interesting spot, by the way, so I can bring the white levels down a little bit here so that the gown isn't as distracting. But that's taking away from what I like. There's other ways to do that, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was in an interesting spot. I actually did try to ask her to move a little bit because of where she was sitting. But there's nothing I can do about that. I could make it dark because she is in the shadow. Instead of, wor instead of worrying about getting the perfect exposure because she is in the shadow. Try to get her to peek out just a little bit. I think these have to live black and white. See, that's ideally, ideally where I'd want to live. But I can't live there. Not easy. Mm. The tighter ones are better. Wow. What changed? My exposure. Oh, man. 
Okay, I need to sync that one. And then we get to the Kölner Dome shot. This was the big group shot. I'll just... Yeah. I had everybody light their face. Didn't mean to hit strong there. Everybody light their face with their phones. I know other people can do other edits on something like this. To really tweak it and paint, I just don't do that. Personally, take the time to do it. I think it looks amazing for how much we're zoomed in. I know the exposure change. I think, no, I could probably do the same thing to all of them. Because there's a couple different variations. I got Todd and Steven in on some. I really think that looks representative of the scene. I could do that. Yeah, still detail, plenty of detail up on these people. It looks pretty solid. Then we got Todd and Steven in on it. Got to get rid of that blue on Steven's face. Or whatever that color is. I can play with that later. But oh, what is that? Oh, somebody pointed their phone down. Too saturated. There, it was too green. Interesting how the white balance changed on that other one. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to hit F. We're going to go, go through the images. I'm just going to take a look because this doesn't suck as much now that I see it. I did make one-to-one -one previews. I just find it interesting that it still has to load. Yeah. Interesting story being told, right? Trying to hit all the details. Don't forget to look up. I mean, it's, it's We start on the one side. See, it's like an all-encompassing story. You start at the one side of the of the bridge. Then you walk yourself across the bridge, find the details. Then you start to run into people. And then you uh, take the candids, and then you end with another picture of the Dom. Mm. The color's good, too. See? Like, when you come back to it, your eyes shift, and it changes what you think. I do like the black and white there. I may like the color. I don't know. I mean, that color's good. That may be the, the shot to use anyway. I'm happy with how that picture turned out, really, with the type of exposure there was. Where it started. I even like the black and white. That one actually isn't bad either. I like the chalk. I wish it was one of those things where they drew cracks on the ground. It was like you're falling into a pit. I'm happy with these. These are boring to me, but they work. That's even more boring. Please like, comment, 
subscribe, all that good stuff. Tough shots. I do think they turn out though. I like these tighter ones. Yeah, it it it's not the easiest thing to do. It just isn't the easiest thing to do to walk yourself into these situations and take those pictures. And then we end it with the Kohler Dome. Color's a little different. I'll need to go back and sync them both. That's it. That's it. There you have it. That's editing. It takes time. I don't even know how long into the edit we are. Let me check the clock here. Another hour. It seems to be the, the going rate here. I take an hour to do this stuff or more, depending on how many pictures there are. So that's it. If you haven't checked out the show, you can always go to frontosphoto.com slash show to get all the episodes of the Frontos Photo Show, download some of the raw files, see more behind-the-scenes stuff, and call it a day, and I'll leave it right there. Jared Poland, frontosphoto.com. See ya. Subscribe now! Watch this, watch this video.